But today we're going to talk about a really deep subject, a really difficult subject. Um, for me, I told, uh, I told some people, I told Melanie, my wife, I said, you know, this is without a doubt the most difficult youth camp assignment I've ever had in my life. Because I have to figure out a way to talk about sex and physical love to campers who range from 9 to 22, who live everywhere from the center of Pennsylvania in farming communities to the middle of Brooklyn in New York City. That's a lot of diversity, and there's a lot of different views about what it means to have to walk in love in your relationships with people of the opposite sex. But when I boiled it down, something struck me as I was praying through the message and praying through where we wanted to go together this morning, and that was really everything in our culture is about dating and romantic relationships, right? Everything. You think about, think about the things that you watch on TV. The reality shows that are talk about dating, you know, The Bachelor and The Bachelorette. You know, even, even in like sitcoms or if you like NCIS or something like that, like I do, one of the things that keeps you tuning in every week is to see if this person is going to get together with this person and you're rooting, for, you're rooting for this couple to finally make it. One of my favorite shows growing up was Friends. And you know the whole thing about Friends is when are Ross and Rachel finally going to get together and have it be permanent? And the whole thing, the whole, and even beyond Ross and Rachel, the entire concept of the TV show Friends was about relationships with members of the opposite sex and figuring out your love life and who you were. And now, obviously, I have a two-year-old, so I watch a lot of the Disney Channel, and that's only partially because I have the two-year-old, okay? I'll be honest, I'm a dork. And one of my favorite shows on Disney Channel right now, of course, is Girl Meets World, because I grew up with Boy Meets World, you know? That was, that was my jam. You know, I love Boy Meets World. TGIF, every Friday night, 8 o'clock, ABC. It was good stuff. And so I like Girl Meets World, and I'm sitting there, and I'm like, even Girl Meets World, it's all about Riley having this crush on, I don't even remember the guy's name. Lucas, thank you. See? You know what I'm talking about. You relate. We're having a moment. It's nice. Okay? But that's what it is. Everything in our culture is about who you're dating. You know, I told you guys that I used to work at a high school, and we talked a little bit about that last year. Um, and as I would walk through the halls of the high school, I would... I'm going to say over here because it sounds less creepy than listen in on conversations. Okay? I would overhear conversations through the hall, and I felt like every single conversation I was hearing was, who's dating who? Or who likes who? Or can you believe she did this with him? And everything that I heard, well, maybe not everything, but like 90% of the things that I overheard were about relationships. And the news and the magazines and TV shows and the internet all tell you that relationships are what define you as a person. And even more than that, if, you, if we continue to boil it down further, people would tell you that the success and the health of your relationship is based on physical stuff. The stages of a dating relationship in, in even middle school and into high school, your relationship progresses based on what you've done, the steps that you've taken. And it's everywhere around us. And so this morning in your devotion, I asked you to look at one passage of Scripture and answer one question. I wanted you to look at 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 4 through 8. 
1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 4 through 8. It says, love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects. Always trusts. Always hopes. Always perseveres. Love never fails. And I asked you to look and say, look, if you go through this char- these characteristics of love, I mean, this is a pretty good definition of love, am I right? If you're looking for a, de- a biblical definition of love, 1 Corinthians 13, verses 4 through 8, give you a pretty good start. What to look for in a loving relationship. And I ask you to take those characteristics and how would they, how would they come to be in a romantic dating relationship with a boyfriend or a girlfriend or a fiance or a husband or a wife? How would that look? And the thing, and I did this exercise too because I don't do. One of my things in youth ministry is I would never ask you to do something that I wouldn't do myself. Pastor Peter can tell you that. He was one of my students. That was one of my big things. I'll never ask you to do something I won't do myself. And so I was doing this exercise myself, and the thing, one of the things that jumped out to me is none of those characteristics in 1 Corinthians chapter 13 have anything to do with physicality. Nothing. You don't have to be physical to be patient. You don't have to be physical to be kind or to not envy or to not boast or not be proud. To not dishonor others. To not be self-seeking. To not be easily angered. Physicality has nothing to do with that. Making out has nothing to do with that. Holding hands has nothing to do with that. Sex has nothing to do with any of those things. And the Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, this is what healthy love looks like. Healthy love is patient. Healthy love is kind. Healthy love does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. The world wants you to believe that you need physicality in your relationship for it to be healthy. I have two words for you. That's garbage. It's garbage. You don't need that. In fact, when physicality comes, gets involved in relationships, especially newly developing relationships, that's when patience disappears and kindness disappears. Because all of a sudden, you start to get defined by what you've done and what you're doing together. I mean, let's be honest. When you're with your boyfriend or your girlfriend or someone that you like, you get bored. What are you most likely going to start doing? Because you don't know what else to do. No one taught you to do anything else. You guys know I live in Lancaster. In fact, eight people asked me if I drove my horse and buggy to camp this week. (laughs) Eight. Like, seriously? No, I don't own one. Jeez. But, and you know, we make, sometimes in the Christian church, we make fun of the Amish people. Because, yeah, sometimes, yeah, sometimes. Because they do things to such an extreme. But in a dating relationship, I kind of feel like they have some good ideas. Like, in a dating relationship in the Amish culture, you don't spend one-on-one time together. You're always with family, or at the very least, friends. In the Amish dating culture, physicality is unheard of because you're not allowed to hold hands until you're engaged. Anyone want to try that? I didn't think so. You can't hold hands until you're engaged. Your first kiss 
is at the altar in front of your family and friends on your wedding day. Now, I'm not suggesting that we place this embargo on hand-holding until, until you guys are all engaged or kissing until your wedding day. But you know what? I think there's a lot to be learned with the, from that because there's some very healthy, strong, vibrant marriages from people that I have met and I have grown to know and respect in the Amish community that I know for a fact their relationship was not based on anything else but what's in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Learning how to be patient and kind and not envious and not boastful and not proud and not rude and not self-seeking and not be easily angered. They spend time, a lot of time, developing these disciplines so that their love will be able to last going forward. You don't need the physical stuff to have a loving relationship. You don't need to make out with your boyfriend and girlfriend to see if they're marriage material. Because let's be honest. Is it time to, we're going to be honest and blunt. I hope that's okay with you. If you get into a dating relationship with someone, nine times out of ten, what's the first thing you noticed about them that attracted them to you? Come on, you guys know the answer to this question. It's how they look. She's pretty. He's handsome. Or hot. Or muscular, or sexy, whatever word you want to use. Come on. Nine times out of ten, that's the first thing you notice about someone, is if they're cute or not. Is, and that's the first thing that you realize when you realize you're into someone, is that you realize that you think they're cute. And you hope that they think you're cute too. Come on. You already know the physical attraction is there. You already know you're going to be able to figure that out before you even start dating because you're already mutually attracted to each other. You don't need it. What you need in order to build a God-honoring relationship that will someday turn into a God-honoring marriage is to figure out how to love that person like you love yourself. And if you're wasting time having sex and making out and doing all these things, you're not going to learn about each other. I mean, you'll learn about each other. You're not going to learn anything beneficial about each other. You're not going to be any more prepared for marriage than you were the first day that you started dating. You have to learn how to work together, how to communicate how to love each other. Do you like playing with Play-Doh? Yeah. Like, who said no? I feel so bad for you right now. I feel so... I ate Play-Doh? That, that explains a lot. All right. So guys, I have a question for you. You remember playing in play playing with Play-Doh when you were growing up, right? In like preschool or Sunday school or whatever. You're with me. Outside, okay, outside, listen, shh. Outside of don't eat it, which I would never have thought of doing when I was a four-year-old even. I mean, I don't know. I guess I probably did it once and thought that it tasted... Have you actually ever tasted Play-Doh? It's terrible. It's awful. Don't tell me anything different. It's terrible. Okay, it does taste salty. That's true. Very salty. Listen, all right. What was the thing, listen, shh. Outside of don't eat the Play-Doh, what was the one thing your teacher or Sunday school teacher or your daycare worker told you not to ever, ever, ever do while you were playing with Play-Doh. 
Don't ever, ever, ever mix the colors together, right? Right? Don't ever, 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 ever mix the colors together. So I have this nice dark black Play-Doh here, and I have this nice lime neon green Play-Doh here. It's beautiful, isn't it? Isn't this fantastic? Don't these look wonderful? Don't you just want to play with them and build all sorts of things? Yeah, yeah, come on, come on. Yeah, yeah, I went there, guys. I went there. How are you dealing with this? Counselors, we're gonna need some heavy-duty counseling later today. All right, I just ruined all these kids' lives by mixing the colors of Play-Doh together. Look, hey, 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 shh. At least make it, no way, man. Look at this. Now it looks like I have one ball of Play-Doh, doesn't it? It's just two different colors. It's two different colors. Am I going to be able to get this apart? No. <laughs> you have faith in me. Thank you. I appreciate that. You don't have faith in me. Well, you and I have to have a talk later. Um, you know, if I start, I'm starting to try to pull this apart a little bit here, even if I go really carefully getting down into the center. Look, I'm getting down into the center and still trying to pull apart. It, it doesn't work, right? There's still some green in the black. There's still some black in the green. I have now ruined two perfectly good containers of Play-Doh, which are both colors that I really like, actually. Why did I do this? Because I'm horrible, yes, thank you. <laughs> Correct answer. No, um, listen, listen. Guys, I want to be real with you, and I need you to be mature with me. Can you do that? Can you handle that? Thank you. The world wants you to realize, wants you to think that sex and physicality in relationships is no big deal. That it, ha it has to be something in your relationship. It has to be a huge part of your relationship, if not the biggest part of your relationship. And all you're doing when you do these things, when you have all of these relationships that are based on sex, on physicality, on physical love, which is not really a true statement in and of itself, there's no such thing really outside of marriage as physical love, because the Bible doesn't talk anywhere about it except in the, the only time they talk about physical love in the Bible outside of a marriage relationship is when they're talking about prostitutes and the terribleness of it. Healthy love outside of a marriage is always an emotional, spiritual, and mindset thing. It has nothing to do with your body has nothing to do with your physicalness. That's why Paul never mentions it in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Now I got this nice orange stuff in here too. I'm not going to be able to get this apart either. Not only am I going to have green in my orange, but I'm also going to have black in my orange here. See? I was able to get most of the orange out, but see, there's still even orange in here. Let me tell you something that you've heard from your youth pastors a million times before. Sex is always a big deal. Sex is never just a throwaway physical thing. Really making out with people and getting hot and heavy and cuddling and all sorts of other stuff that we like to do is not ever just simply a physical thing and no big deal. Because always, 
you leave parts of yourself with that person when you do that. It's like squeezing the Play-Doh all the way together so that there's no seams, so that you put it together into that one misshapen ball of, I don't even know what to call this. And when you try to pull yourself out of those relationships that have been more based on physicality than on, than on love and then on Jesus, you end up taking a part of yourself and that person with you. Or you take a part of that person with you and you leave a part of yourself behind. Till eventually, when you find the person that you do want to spend the rest of your life with, instead of being a nice, smooth, solid, colored ball of Play-Doh, you look something like this. You have the black, you have the orange, you have the green, you have the scars and the marks of every single relationship that you've ever had on you. And instead of putting, bringing to your husband or your wife on your wedding day the nice should have opened this before I started. Ugh. Instead, of, instead of presenting to your husband or wife this nice, solid color, this nice, solid piece of who you are, you're coming to your husband and wife at the altar on your wedding day and saying, here you go. Here's me. But here's also Johnny or Sally or Susie, or Kelly, or Josh, or whoever, whatever names you want to put on that. That's what you're doing. And even more than that, even more than that, this is what you're presenting to the body of Christ as your best witness for what Jesus has done for you. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Paul writes this. In verses 12 through 20. And I was just going to share this with you straight out. I have the right to do anything you say. But not everything is beneficial. I have the right to do anything, but I will not be mastered by anything. You say food for the stomach and the stomach for food, and God will destroy them both. The body, however, is not meant for sexual immorality, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. By his power, God raised the Lord from the dead, and he will raise us also. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ himself? Shall I then take the members of Christ and unite them with a prostitute? Never. Do you not know that he who unites himself with a prostitute is one with her in body? For it is said the two will become one flesh. But whoever is united with the Lord is one with him in spirit. Flee from sexual immorality. All other sins a person commits are outside the body. But whoever sins sexually sins against their own body. Do you not know that, the, that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you? whom you have received from God. You are not your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. There's a study published recently in the American Journal of Medicine. A study that kind of surprised me at the same time it didn't. You know that phrase in there, the two will become one flesh. We always talk about how when, you know, in a sexual relationship, and especially in a marriage, the two become one flesh. That never really made sense to me when I was your age, when I was growing up. Because I was kind of like you. I was like, you know, sex isn't that big of a deal. 
I'm not really thinking anything about it. I'm not going to remember it. It's just something to do because I'm bored with my girlfriend. But then I read this study from the American Journal of Medicine that said this. Women maintain a small portion of DNA from every sexual partner they've ever had in their lives. And when I read that, the Bible's words that say the two will become flesh made all the, se- all the, all the sense in the world to me. Because then, bringing that out, you can literally say, ladies, if you're not saving yourself for your husband, when you walk up to the aisle on your wedding day, you're offering your husband yourself and everyone else you've ever been with in your life. And that's not just pastor speak. There's now scientific research to back that up. The Bible, proven by science, again. And guys, don't think you're off the hook either. Because when you stand on that altar, you're not offering your wife your whole self. Because you have left a part of you with every girl you've ever been with. You're not offering your wife your your best, yourself. We're offering each other this. The band's going to come up and uh, get ready to play for us. I want us to take a few minutes to really think about this. Think about the implications of what we've talked about this morning. What does it mean for love to walk in our relationships? It means that when love walks in our relationships, we value, we value that perfect person that God has created just for us enough to say, I want to give my absolute best to them on my wedding day. So when you walk in love in your physical and dating or your dating and romantic relationships, that's what it means. It means instead of your relationship being based like every, on every other TV and media relationship that culture wants you to think is normal, you're going to take a stand and you're going to say, no, my love isn't like the love in Friends. My love isn't like the love in the Kardashian family. My love isn't like the love that is seen in whatever, you name it, media. My love is based on what Paul says love is about. My love is based on what Jesus tells me I'm supposed to do as a follower of him. And it's going to be a hard decision. Out of all the decisions that you make this week, this might be the hardest you have to make. Because pretty much every other person that's not inside this room right now, and maybe even some people who are in this room right now, will try to convince you over and over and over again, it's no big deal. But the no big deal mindset gets you this. It gets you ruined Play-Doh that's not good for anything that you can't build anything of substance with because it's not whole, it's, been, its integrity has been compromised. So I'm not going to let you off the hook today. I'm not going to let you off the hook today. I'm not going to close in prayer and send you out to your small groups and to move on to what's next until you have taken time to think about what God is telling you this morning. Because I believe God is telling you things this morning. God is working on your hearts. And the cool thing is, serving our God is your past doesn't count to our God. Today at camp, June 30th, 2015, can be day one for you and Jesus. 
can be day one for you and your husband and your wife. And God can cleanse you. God can cleanse you and make you whole again so that you can smile and walk with confidence down that aisle on your wedding day and say, I have given you the best I possibly could. And so I want you guys to make to think this through and stand and make this commitment with me this morning is that Penn Jersey District Youth In Penn Jersey District Youth, we're going to walk in integrity in our relationships. We're going to walk in love in every one of our relationships. And that means saving ourselves and walking in a way that is going to give our absolute best to the person that God has planned for us. You're going to take the hard road. You're going to take the high road. If you're willing to say, Pastor Josh, today I am committing to walk in love in all my relationships. I want you to stand together as a sign of unity. I want you to know that God will help you. If you're going to say, Pastor Josh, I am going to walk in love in the way that I hold myself in dating and romantic relationships. If you need to lay things down to God for him to, take care, for him to take away from you, if you say, Pastor Josh, I've messed up. It's messed up. I need a supernatural touch from Jesus so that I can live up to this commitment. I want you to come forward and give those things to Jesus. Come on. It's hard. You're not taking the easy road. You're not taking the road that's gonna that's gonna win you a lot of friends. You're taking the road that's gonna require bold stands. And today is the day to make that stand. Say, I am throwing this old ball of Play-Doh out. Jesus. Take the junk. Take the things that I have ruined, that I have given away. Get rid of them and make me pure and make me whole again. So the band's going to sing. If you need to lay things down before Jesus this morning, take the time to do that. All of you look around. See the people who are standing with you and encourage each other. Stand with each other. God isn't late, as the song says. He won't delay. He's your refuge, he's your strength. No matter what you're up against, God is bigger. So push into him and make this commitment to walk in love this morning.
if you need more time with Jesus, take all the time that you need. God's schedule is more important than your camp schedule. Counselors, if you see some of your youth here and you want to gather around them and support them, I would encourage you to do that. For those of you who are standing both up here and in the seats, if you're making that commitment to say, today, I am walking in love in my life. Follow your stand with words. Vocalize it. Say it. Counselors, encourage your kids in your small groups both this, this afternoon and this evening to vocalize the commitment that they are making. Make them stand behind their words. This isn't something to be taken lightly. God loves you. And God's going to heal what needs healed. And He's going to work through the things that need work. And He's going to give you the strength and the courage that you need to be men and women of your word going out of this place. God, I thank you for your children. I thank you for the healing work and the power of your Holy Spirit in this place this morning. I thank you that I thank you for the commitments that have been made. God, I thank you for the burdens in the past that have been thrown at your feet, that you have already forgotten them, that you have already th sent them as far as the east is from the west, that there has been healing this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. And we speak healing into these students, both male and female, these counselors, both male and female, that are standing before you and saying, God, I need a touch. God, I need your strength. I, sp I speak strength and boldness into the Penn Jersey youth today in the name of Jesus Christ to stand for a God-honoring romantic relationship and love life. God, we love you. There's nothing else to say. God, we just love you. Thank you for the blessing us with your presence this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.